All righty, folks, as I was so excited to report in my weekly goal tracking, I have finally started meeting with real estate agents in Las Vegas, trying to uncover what will become my buy box, what will become the thing that I focus on daily. And we had that conversation with the one and only and great Joe D. How you doing, Joe? Good morning. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Olivia and I uh, really enjoyed our time. Uh, obviously, uh, we recorded it. We'll be sharing it with the world. But uh it was very nice to see someone who has, you know, decades of experience in Vegas break down Vegas as well as you did. And um, yeah, it was a great time. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. It was uh, my pleasure. And um, I, I love uh, Olivia's uh, energy, her enthusiasm. And, uh, you know, I don't get to spend as much time with her, but she's definitely as sharp as they come. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, one of the things that we came out of that session was, is, is you had some questions about, okay, Zuber, why are you doing this? Help me with the vocabulary, you know, just in case, you know, my audience calls and they're dropping buy box and yield and all this stuff. Help me understand, you know, kind of my vision. Is, is that a kind of a fair base question? Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the concept of buy box uh, only because I've, I've been a listener of yours, but uh, quite frankly, um, I don't think most real estate uh, agents will. Right. Uh, and then I felt like, you know, if I'm really going to support you on this, I need to get clear on your buy box. You could be clear on it, which is great. But for me to be most effective at what I do, I got to be able to look through the lens that you're looking yeah. through. So. Yeah. So let's so let's walk through this. I love this conversation. Obviously, we'll help you and I, but hopefully the audience can take this and share it with their agents. Uh, frankly, if you are a Las Vegas real estate agent, you think you have a deal, maybe this will help you understand if it is or isn't in my world. So there's kind of it's kind of two steps. We are at step one. Uh, what I'm hoping to get done over the next 30 to 45 days that Olivia and I are doing is we're taking this big footprint, which is Las Vegas, Henderson. And we are going to knowledgeable experts like you, like Lisa, uh, like a couple of others. And we're going to say, you know, tell us what you think. What does your lens look like? Because this is something we did in Fresno. I think we talked to 20 or 25 folks and they all have their own opinions. They mm -hmm. all see their world or Vegas differently. What I hope happens and happened last time is enough of you will say, Something, a, a spot, a zip code, a, a whatever. And some, we're, we're some, go ahead. Get some crossover where, you know, there's some commonality. Yeah, exactly. So what have Olivia and I have done since you and I met just to catch the audience up on? So after, after our conversation, you gave us basically three areas to look at. We have looked at two of the three already because we're doing this in the afternoon. We're going to look at the third one today. To catch people up who didn't see the series or haven't seen it, it's not public yet. We talked about uh, some stuff around the military base. We like mm -hmm. that. We talked about stuff around the strip. We're particularly excited about that. And now we're going to go check out stuff around the hospitals uh, for um, long-term nurses or, or, or whatever that's called. Um, so that's 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 what we have done, and we have one more to do. Uh, with Lisa, we're going to go figure out condo hotels, which we know nothing about. Maybe something we like, maybe something we don't. Uh, and then, so that's step one. Let's try to get a a focus on a spot in, in Vegas. Let's just say it's, what is that, northwest, the military base up here? Yeah, north by northwest. So let's just pretend that's it. I'm not saying it is, but of the two that we've looked at, that's the one that clicked. What did we see? We saw relatively new developments. We saw a lot of new construction going on. Um, we saw relatively cheap price points, right? Uh, but we don't know rents yet. We don't know, you know, all these other things. But let's say, let's just say that becomes the buy box after we learn. So what what will happen next? So what will happen next is we will get a set of criteria. Let's say it's single family homes, over th three bedrooms and above. Two baths and above, single store. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. And basically what's going to happen is I'm going to set that search criteria up in realtor.com. I would tell the agents I work with, this is what I want. So everybody could do it. Hopefully get alerts and you know all of that good stuff. But what happens next? That's what we're going to show what happens next. Because once we get that criteria, at least for three or four months, that will be the only criteria I look at. Because what I'm going to try to do over 60 days 
is I'm going to document that buy box. Hey, one, two, three, Main Street, two, four, five, six, Elephant, you know, whatever it is. And I'm going to put this in a spreadsheet. So let me share it with you. And my official spreadsheet may be slightly more complicated, but I wanted to show a simple one so anybody could repeat it. So you seeing this now? I am. All right. So what's going to happen, right? First, we're going to pick the asset. Then we're going to pick the area. Then we're going to get a set of criteria. And then I will look at it 20 minutes a day, seven days a week for three months. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the variables that I know in these columns. I'm going to break these down into kind of three chunks. What I hope to produce is the blue column. We're going to get to the blue column at the end. Okay. When I talk about learning average, that's the blue column. But in order to get to the blue column, I need to figure out the green and the yellow. So we'll do the green first, just left to right. So what I need to figure out is how much cash do Olivia and I have to invest in this asset? That would be down payment. That would be any make ready called here repair costs and closing costs. Now you could assume, I think I assume 30% here. Over time, this could change. You know, I need 25% down or 40 or whatever it is. So I'm going to figure out how much cash I have to put out. Now, this is where seller financing gets interesting. As you know, you don't always have to put 30% down. Maybe, you know, you could put 10% down. I looked at a seller finance deal uh, over the weekend um, that somebody wanted 30%, but it only made sense at 20%. Now, the deal didn't go anywhere, but that's because I've done this for a long time. I said, well, the only, the only thing that matters to me is the yield. The, the seller balked, they wanted more down, so it didn't work. But uh, the repair cost, that is something that I hope to figure out because as you know, especially in that part of town, there's a lot of new construction. There's a lot of young stuff. So maybe the make ready cost will be zero. Maybe it'll be lipstick, paint and carpet. I don't know. But that, but that is gonna be money that I have to take out of my account to make it work and make it tenant ready. So the repair cost or make ready cost is important. And then I got to figure out average closing cost in Vegas, right? On a, I don't know, a $300,000 purchase, what's that going to be? I'll, I'll talk to title and escrow and figure all that out. But that's the first column here. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Okay. Now I need to assume I have the asset. It is rented and I need to figure out all the operational costs. What does it take to run this asset? So that will be the mortgage payment. And it's... It's not just interest only. This is the full payment, P&I. Uh, I assume in this math, again, simple that it's interest only. Uh, but if you're watching this and you're building your own, this is your mortgage payment. If you have an interest only payment, great. If you have a full principal interest, put in the full payment. I try, I, I try to build spreadsheets because not everybody is an Excel wizard and I don't want to lose people. So again, I'll say in the mortgage payment column, put in the full mortgage. There are plenty of mortgage calculators online. And if you're good in Excel, you can actually put in the formula for your payment. Next, taxes and insurance. I need to figure out, like in Vegas, when you buy a home, does it get reassessed at the new value? Uh, well, I got to figure out the insurance for a you know a five-year-old townhome or a single-family home. And again, I need to figure that out yearly, and then I divide by 12 to get monthly. Does that make sense? Totally. So again, then I'll put in property management because I really doubt we'll self-manage. We may self-manage. So if we're going to self-manage, that'll be a zero. But obviously a lot of stuff in Vegas actually has HOA. So I'll have to add in a column for HOA. All my stuff in California doesn't, but I would add another column for HOA. So I'm going to learn all of these expenses and column K have a reserve, right? For capital expenses, vacancies, bad debt, all of that. Yeah. So these are- you have a formula on your uh, reserve or your right now it's at ten percent. Ten percent, okay. Yeah, just and, and again, I'm over time when I talk to more Vegas investors, I'll figure if that's good or bad. But yes, there's you absolutely have to include something there. Yeah. yeah okay. We see on the on the multifamily stuff, we run a lot at five and six percent vacancy, um, but you also have multiple units, so there's you know a little overlap. Yeah. But ten percent is a, a good conservative number. Um, might be a, a tad high, but certainly yeah. worth being a little high than low. Yeah, that, absolutely. Oh, always want a positive surprise, not a negative. That is for sure. <laughs> so all of these become monthly expenses, right? And again, in, in Vegas or yeah, Henderson, I'll probably have to add HOA, but you know that's that's work to be done. 
Yep. Then all I have to do is figure out the monthly rent. Right? What what would this unit rent for? Then I just do a simple subtraction. Anytime you see a parentheses, that's bad, bad, bad. In my world, that's called an alligator. And alligators produce negative yield, which means, hey, take, in this case, $44,000 out of my account and have it produce a negative 1%. We never do negative deals. I don't care if people won't, people need to hear this. Let's just say, Joe, you brought me a deal and I did the math on this and it was negative 1%. But because you are who you are, you found a seller that had to get out and I could get a $100,000 uh, deal right below appraised value just because I can write a check and close cash. Um, in this exercise, I would not do that deal. Okay. I will never do a negative yield. Now, in fairness, because I have a lot of experience and I trust you and blah, 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 I might do that deal, but my purpose in that case will be to flip it, not- yeah buy and hold, right? There's, I have, I have enough experience, 25 years that I have other exits, but this spreadsheet, this buy box, this exercise is long-term buy and hold. I will never, I don't care if you give me it 50% off. If it's negative, I'm not buying it as a long-term hold. I don't believe in appreciation. It's not on my spreadsheet, as you can see. Yeah, it's, it, it would be a purely a speculative play, which then relies on the market dynamics uh, going in your favor. Mm -hmm. uh, which for anybody that's been in real estate with any length of time, uh, <laughs> you you know that is a complete roll of the dice. Right. So I get it. Yeah. So, okay. So now let's break this down. So what's going to happen is this spreadsheet will be, it could have a hundred rows. It could have 150 rows over the course of 60 or 90 days. But what I'm trying to do is I will try to get to average because I am this... What I want people to realize doing this focus and daily discipline, it's not about getting a deal. It's not about getting a deal. I want people to hear this. What I'm trying to do is figure out what the average return is in that buy box right now. I don't care what it was five years ago. I don't care what it is five years from now. I want to know what the average yield is in that buy box. So if we just look at what's on the screen now and we just highlight all these columns, we will see at the bottom that the average yield today is 6%. Some more, some less. So, okay. So in 90 days, I would come back to you, Joe, and say, okay, Joe, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for the, the um, searches that you set up for me. They've been very helpful. Here's my big spreadsheet. The average for the buy box is 6%. Okay, great. You don't know what that means. Well, what that means is I will never do a deal that's not good or great. Okay, great. What does that mean? A good deal is one and a half percent above average, and a great deal is three percent above average. Okay. So the last, you know, if we fast forward in the time machine, 90 days, I come to you at six percent. You know, frankly, I'm only going to be looking at nines. So we're going to be looking at deals that produce at least nine percent, assuming in this case the average is six. And again, that means I could write offers on every listing. But what we're going to do is we're going to back into what a 9% yield means, which probably means offering less than list price. Does this so, all make sense? Yeah. And what, what I love about this um, is, you know, and you could go into virtually any market in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the thing that I'm hearing from you is the patience. Correct. The discipline, right? Because you're clear on what the number is, right? This is the average for the, the market for the yield. And then for you to do a deal, it has to meet this and you'll completely unemotional. Yep. Um, everything else is irrelevant. It just yep. does this number work. Absolutely. Um, and again, I the key to all of this work is I don't believe in doing average, right? If the average buy box is 6%, why the hell would I settle for average? I mean, really, I only need to do one deal a year. So yeah. why make it average? Yeah, you got the time, you got the patience, you just keep yeah. waiting, 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 and it falls into the right box. Now you pounce. Yeah. And, the, and the beauty of this, Joe, is you can take any listing and write an offer that produces 9%, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people look at this and go, great, you just got to wait for that one listing to come on. No, what, what you and I might do in a hot market 
Like, let's just assume the market's like it is today. No inventory, hot. What we will probably do is go, okay, I'm not going to bother you, Joe, with anything less than 30 days on market. It's not worth your time. It's not worth mine. But as soon as we get to 31 days, yeah. we're going to take a shot. Got it. Anything that's in our buy box at 31 days or more, we are going to write what I'll call it probably a disrespectful offer. We're going to test the seller's motivation. Yeah, but you got nothing to lose. They're sitting there. Yeah. They're waiting for an offer. So why not be the one that brings it? Yeah. And again, my, again, I've done this for enough. So let's just play this out. Done the work, 6%. We're shooting for nine, 30 days on market, 30, you know, 31st day, Joe writes three offers. What's very likely is going to happen is those first three people are going to tell us to pound sand. <laughs> but what's going to happen is I will set a reminder every two weeks to send it again. And eventually it will sell. It will be taken off the market or C, they will finally counter. Mm. Then it gets interesting. Got it. That's, this, is, this is a very simple process that takes focus, discipline, and a partner, right? Your agent, in this case, you, that understand and realize, you know what? We're going to write a few offers for Zuber and Olivia. Um, they're not going to waste my time. It's going to not, it, it, I will never ask you to write a first day listing unless I'm willing to pay list price. It's not worth your time or mine. Got it. But damn it, day 31, open season. I love it. This 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 really makes it uh, simple from an understanding standpoint. I'm going to speak from you know the majority of the agents out there. Um, this gives us a, a clear lens to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and you know, I would say from from an investor's perspective, um, when communicating to an agent, if they understand where you're coming from, you 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 do get in alignment because what can happen. Um, is if I'm flying blind and I have no idea why you're doing what you're doing, the, the likelihood is I'm going to get frustrated. I'm going to say, oh, absolutely. Uh, Michael, I don't get what you're doing here. You're, you know, you are wasting my time. Now I can go, oh no, clearly I see it. No big deal. I understand the rules of engagement. Now we can move forward. Yeah. This is your, this is one thing that, you know, with this whole NAR settlement, one of the things that I see coming is buyers, agents really leaning on investors you guys need to have these conversations, right? Mm -hmm. You need to realize in, investors, right? Zuber in this case, you got to realize that these buying agents, they have lots of investors that make lots of promises. Oh, we're going to do this. We're going to buy multiple deals, blah, blah, blah. You're not loyal. So have conversations, set up, you know, have this, educate them what you're looking for and then be loyal, right? If somebody else happens to bring you a deal that this other one has it, it's okay. But again, have these communication, get on the same page. And then agents, what I would tell an agent to do today is I would tell them to do what you just did in 15 minutes. Give me your playbook. If you tell me, just find a deal, I'm not going to return your phone call. Right. Hey, hey, I hate that today. Like, just give me a deal. Like, what, what I think is a deal may, may or not be what you think a deal is. I Investors, don't be that lazy. And if you're an agent... I give you permission not to call those people back because that's that's a that's a sign they're going to waste your time. Yeah, yeah. The the old adage is I'm looking for something thirty percent below market. I'm going well, like everybody I know will buy that deal. You yeah, know? I got lots of people shopping in a hot market like this. You know, it's like you know we can get it today and sell it tomorrow. You know, so yeah, or buy it yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that, absolutely yeah. Well, good. Let's, let's, let's be let's be honest. Let's buy ourselves. So, um, if you look at a market, and we just use the example of the six percent yield wound yeah. up becoming the average, and we know we just made that number up. It yeah, might we just made it up. It might be seven, whatever it is. Um, yeah. As as you look through from from a, a dollar return, if you hit an average, uh, it, or let me ask it this way: Is there an average yield that tells you that market isn't going to work for what you want to do? Yeah, so, so so some of the markets like San Diego, California produces a negative average. Okay. Not going there, right? Got it. The average is negative, not worth my time. Um, I would tell you if the average was like two or three percent, that would be tough. Okay. Because because again, my my rules are simple. Good is one and a half percent better, and three percent is great. So let's say average was two percent, which makes great five percent. Frankly. Real estate's got a lot of risk. I'll throw the stuff yeah. in a treasury. Yeah. It'd be okay. just fine. Yeah. That's, and I assume there was a number and that 
that makes sense to me because wh why deal with the plumbing calls or, you know, anything else? No. Okay. Yeah, Great. Exactly. All right. Well, is there any other information that uh, you feel I should know to be able to see through this lens? No. And this is, this is why I'm, this is why you're like, you talked about traveling nurses. I screw that. I didn't think of that name earlier, traveling nurses, why it was interesting to Olivia and I, we don't know yet, but we think our traditional long-term, you know, lease rentals might not produce a, an average number we're excited about. Might not. We're, yeah. we're there. So we might have to change. Olivia and I may have to look at other investing vehicles like perhaps traveling nurses. And that, you know, that's both exciting and like nerve wracking, but that's why we got to figure it out. If, if you've got to find a place like where you can make a decent return. If not, we'll just let the cash sit at 5%. So we have, a, you and I talked about a couple of units and and um, that that cater to the traveling nurses. And uh, they, they are great because they are, they're just here to work. You know, uh, typically it, it could be 90 days. We find a lot of them that are six months uh, and that tends to work better for us because we don't want a lot of turnover. Um, but they do less wear and tear on the properties than a traditional Rental, oh sure moving things in and out and you know just even just the way they're living so when they're here they're here for a project they're they're all in mm -hmm. on the project now i'm going to tell you uh shannon my wife contacted me on friday as i was flying out of town and she said uh she just had a great conversation uh for one of our uh, furnished single family homes uh with a young man who is a triple a baseball player ah. And we have a property that's probably six, seven minute drive from the ballpark. Um, and it's three bedrooms, three full bathrooms, right? So a little bit unusual. Usually our single story, three bedrooms are two and a half. Um, mm -hmm. But he and two other roommates from the baseball team. Now, I will tell you, you know, like to me, I'm, I'm thinking college fraternity yeah. things of that nature. However, in this particular case, we were planning on remodeling this uh, furnished rental because when we bought it it was in good shape and that was i think it was six years ago mm. and we're like okay it's getting tired right. and we push the rents more and we're sitting on some cash so we're like let's improve this now i don't care now obviously i don't want them to trash the property but it's going to be an interesting experiment yeah. outside of what we've typically been doing which is either uh, executives insurance claims Mm -hmm. uh, or the traveling nurses. They, they, that's the bucket that we typically focused on. So yeah, uh, it's going to be really interesting. I mean, I don't want to predict the future because again, this takes work and and I'm all for it, but the outcome might be, you know what, we got to look at furnished rentals, whether it's traveling nurses or I, I, I don't know yet. Yeah. Um, but that's why everybody's going to watch us do this. And, and, uh, obviously look forward to you being a big part of that. So it's going to be fun, but at the end of the day, this is about positive cash flow. This is about learning getting great deals. And the other thing I want to say is I want to make this very clear. Olivia and I have a pile of cash. Olivia and I have some great relationships. We could in theory, cut the line, meaning not do the work, mean trust the people around us and just do something. That's not how we roll. We don't believe anybody can cut the line. You've got to do the work. You've got to, you got to build the rigor. You've got to build the discipline. And at the end of the day, it's your money on the line. So if you don't do the work, you're gambling. You're just flat out gambling. And I, I might live in Vegas, but I'm not up for gambling with my money. Oh, I, I love this. And I, I appreciate you sharing the blueprint and I can't wait to, uh, to see how we uh, evolve. Cool, man. Well, Jody, if somebody wanted to reach out to you and start their own search, get their own investments going with uh, you and your wife doing, or you and your daughter, sorry, daughter doing some searches, how would they reach out to you and the team? Yeah, I mean, probably the simplest thing would be to shoot me a text, honestly, directly, 702-630-6767, 702-630-6767. Uh, just shoot me a text and just say that you, you know, found me through uh, through this channel, uh, one rental at a time. And uh, we understand that uh, it helps us know the lens that they're listening through. So we know yeah. who we're calling back um, yeah. and an understanding of their education, uh, which makes it a lot simple than just somebody who's random. That mm -hmm. says well, we're thinking about doing something. So yeah, folks, at the end of the day, if you want to get in my network, my world that I'm already building in Vegas, Joe D is the guy to start with. One more time, Joe, what's the text number? Uh 702-630-6767.
Yep, folks, tell him you came from ORAT or Zuber, and he will take care of you. Thanks, Joe. Take care.